Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us dirty, dirty, a bunch of us, a bunch of us, dirty as for a second. Yes, we are. Keep it. Taylor, keep it. Keep it. Please, Dungeons and Dragons. More spin the bottle. I'm surprised it took this long. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how, do, how do you know when your CPU's close to full? Uh, <laughs> well, before we jump into our dirty ass night of role play, um, we do have some announcements to get through. Imogen. Are you okay? I'm, fi I'm fine. How are you here right now? I wanted to reach out and talk to you for a moment, quickly, because I know you're likely in the middle of something and I don't have much time myself. I'm doing my part here, slowing what I can on my front. I wanted to come to you, because Ludinus is growing impatient since his return and he's keeping me close. He's been watchful. He's been sending off the other route is born, I believe, to ends I don't know. They're beyond my sight now. Off of the moon, or? I assume. I do know that he has sent one of his simulacrum with a team to meet with the Sorrow Lord, to broker something with the Unseelie in the coming day or two at um, something called the Shrine of Gilded Gifts. It's within the Amethyst Gulch Sierras. In his words, he noted that they'd been frustratingly absent partners since the destruction of the Twinned Key, and he needs their help now more than ever. It's pretty He's high. helped us in also <clears throat> Fuck all the ideas are popping! Woo! <laughs> if we send, oh, yeah. oh, if we get the Platinum Sanctuary Authority to go after like the Shrine of the Gilded Gifts and they Roll a D100 fuck right shit now. up over there. Wait, Platinum. Wow! No. I'm just gonna see if you have a heart attack right now from that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's, really oh, it was pretty close. Um, <laughs> so a lot of zeros on those dice. Big um, wheels. Before we go in, I'm going to just pull Fern aside and say, just so the air is clear before yeah. we go in there and risk our. I just want to tell you, I had no idea you were spoken for. I wouldn't have, <clears throat> I wouldn't have been flirty uh, with you if I had known that you were already <clears throat> with someone. Oh well, 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 I'm sorry. Well, no, 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 I don't want to no, dishonor no, no. you like. No, that. no, 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 no. That wouldn't. That does. That just. That just. That doesn't dishonor <laughs> me. I. But you're clearly. Coupled up no. in a long-term relationship, and I don't want to—I don't want to sell you that. As you hold <laughs> your tongue, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna stop playing with it. Um, listen, I noticed that you were canoodling, so I just yes, but I can canoodle who I want to canoodle with. Oh, okay. I don't know. I haven't made any decisions yet. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's the end of the world. I don't want to like put all my. <laughs> Put on my, it feels like it's the end does, of the world. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Maybe know, I'll put my eggs in all the baskets. Does he know this? I, I have a feeling <clears throat> that they probably know that I'm, 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 a, I'm a free bird, you know? I'm a free will and. They probably know. Free bird. Yeah, but maybe, maybe, maybe In my experience, it's best to be upfront with these things. Absolutely, listen. No lies. I think, I think, I think they're great. And I just, I, I just, I don't know what I want. Do you I don't want, know what I want me to talk to them about? It? No. <laughs> well, what would you say? <laughs> just, just figure out. Just ask them what their take on the situation is. What do, you, what do you guys think? What do you think your status is? That sort of thing. And then oh, I could tell to you. See what, what, what they're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this is Bloody just damn. like, hey, this is an end, the end of the world hookup, or like I really actually like you. I don't know what I want, and I'm still figuring that out. I think they're fantastic. I think everybody's fantastic in this group. If anybody, I don't know. I don't know what I want. I don't want to be tied down. It makes me a little nervous. Okay. What's your deal? 
What, what do you mean? I'm not proposing anything. I'm just asking you since you're asking me. What do you mean? What's my deal? Like, what are you? What are you? Are, do, are you with anybody? Wow. I. I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for in general. For someone else. Well, Did someone else say something? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, who was it? Was it the know. little the little warrior? Because he is fine. Right. Yeah, <laughs> little, little warriors really something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> um, little warriors, great. Um, listen, uh, you don't need to be so serious. I don't. It's just. I don't trot because I'm a cow. But if I did, I would be hot to trot. <laughs> I. I'm looking. I don't looking? know. I don't know if that was apparent, but I'm. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for? You'll know it when you see it. <laughs> I mean, because I have not to be too forward, but <clears throat> you check a lot of boxes. Oh boy. Oh, I mean, I know. Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I think you should feel it out with Ashton and maybe see what their vibe is. You know. For me or for you? Wow, is that a reason? Sure. Oh. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, do what you want. Live your life. Probably not that much time left. That's the way I see it. And anyway. I flustered you. Let's go to the moon. Plant my hand on your shoulder and say, I'm going to be subtle about this. And I might be crazy. But is that gentleman over there? familiar to you, and I lean in close to you and point past your chin at an individual across the chamber. Who just vanishes into the crowd. Oh! As everyone's going into the forum. He kind of looked like you. A lot. <gasps> Did you see anything more? Any markings? How, how old was he? <sighs> Older? Um, finely dressed? Just see his... Was he cloaked or his hair or anything else? Well, that's up to you. The, the glance yeah. that you saw, kind of uh, darker salt and pepper hair, um, like billowing light colored uh, regal silks. Um, familiar. Sorry, count that. Yeah. yeah. Familiar oh. features. That's interesting. Um, you know, you, but aged like finer wine. I know what you're getting at. Uh, he always favored mother. I always favored him. All right. Keep your eyes peeled. He's got to be in here somewhere. No, surely not. All right, I'll shake it off. Okay. Did you just turn lavender? Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. And as you step into the form proper, you glance up and you can see the beautiful, intricate uh, designs of the, the, the ceiling above there um, that you saw the night before are slightly obscured because that silver dragon that was on top of the structure the night before is currently now latched onto the ceiling from above. Its claws dug into uh, what look like set handhold points designed for this entity yeah. and itself oh, sits cool. vigilant and invisible at the top of this chamber as well so you have the sense that one this place is pretty well safe guarded considering at the moment and also don't do anything stupid comms check comms check <laughs> radio alert ha oh, there are invisible golems i count six repeat six Golems up on the support pillars. They are fucking massive. Their hands are bigger than me. Plus, if y'all remember that beastie, that shiny ass dragon that was on top of the place, yeah. he's on the underside of the roof, just perched, invisible. Don't look. There, don't look. Don't look. I, don't look. I can't help myself. And I cast uh, see invisibility as well. Calm your breathing. Calm your breathing. Calm your breathing. As you glance up and start getting like your 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 breath starts quickening, you glance up and see the dragon, and the dragon whose like head is tucked in just goes and seems, <laughs> seems to meet your gaze for just a second. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Pee pee pee. Just a little. Bit. Just a little bit. How are you doing, Dorian? I'm just fine. What a wonderful event. I concur. <laughs> I hope everything goes well. Me too. He clears his throat and about to step up, at which point Vexali goes, um, yes, we would like to bring this immediately to bear. Not him, us, right now. 
Thank you. Hot. Um, kind of settles down. Marquis kind of shoots a glare and sits into his seat. Uh, she looks across the chamber and she gets up. Uh, Allura gets up across the way. Groon gets up. Um, and as they begin to step down, the Bright Queen gets up and the other three kind of stop, nod, and kind of the four of them gather, not in the center of the chamber, but kind of representing the corners of the forum where they stand. Lexalia looks up to the rest of the group. I'm a representative of the Council of Taldore, and many of my compatriots here I've known for some time. <laughs> While politics might be many of your fortes, we are people of action, which is what we need now. These three points. To assail one is to let the others have time to prepare, to quicken, to succeed. Thus, we assail them at once, simultaneously. And I believe we have the means. We propose the first prong of this is to gather intel and layout of this new uh, keep, this uh, Malleus keep, if you will. Uh, track the arrival of these Ruidian forces, uh, their organization, where they lay about this keep, uh, and then from there develop our attack plans. Call forth uh, many of the gathered heroes that are present here and abroad to champion the charge, supported by the might and the war machine of Exandria that can be spared from the defense of their various homelands and cities. The intent is, and she smiles, whether by cunning or force, she glances over to Keyleth, <clears throat> to deliver the legends known as Vox Machina to the Malleus <laughs> Key. There's a bit of murmuring and whispering, and there's a little bit of like like a chuckle to the crowd, and a couple of folks that are kind of like, what? And she goes, we once stopped a god and saved this city. We can destroy a ruddy tower. Everyone shuts up. <laughs> Allura takes the center of the chamber. The next order of business is the assassination of the Weave Mind. Now, we have confirmed means of delivering specific strike teams onto Ruidis without the use of the Bloody Bridge. And we will prepare them to strike simultaneously. So this first team will rush to the sanctum of the Weave Mind, the monstrous, tyrannical, psychic cabal that reigns over that realm. I would offer a trustworthy, clever and capable crew who have more than once staved off and ended cosmic threats to Exandria of a similar nature, all from the shadows of history. They've already been instrumental in our work against Ludinus, so I put forth my recommendation for the Mighty Nine of Wildmount to be set to this task. Their experience, skills, and resilience to our enemy strengths makes them our standout choice. There's a bit of reticence in the chamber, <clears throat> and you hear a voice in the back go, I never heard of this mighty nine! Yeah. Yes, we have, we have no assurance they're capable of this. What assurances can you give us? The Bright Queen steps oh, into the center sure. of the chamber, <laughs> and you watch as the voices get quiet and whispers kind of echo throughout the chamber. As she steps forward, you can see her long cape of lavender chainmail kind of scrapes across Shit. the marble ground, giving this sh this sen sound of soft, distant rainfall <clears throat> as she takes the middle. She takes out her staff and <laughs> slams it on the ground, Just and yeah. the, yeah, the dodecahedron like. shape at the top of her staff <laughs> alights brightly. I know and have met, worked, and put my trust within this mighty nine myself. I can lend 
my experience and trust behind the words of Alora Vaisorin. The Kreen dynasty of Johas also seconds this recommendation. And we implore all of you present to do the same. I say we let him go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Please tell me that's Jester in the crowd. <laughs> Whom do you say your prayers to before you sleep at night? I pull step forward. You go. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> How fitting that we stand in the Platinum Sanctuary, <laughs> the holiest of places that I've devoted my life to. It is a, the tenants of the Platinum Dragon include <laughs> standing as a paragon of honor and justice, fighting for the righteous, <laughs> stepping up for the weak, these are the ideals that Bell's Hells wears proudly on our breast. Get up, Regal! <laughs> I have traveled and known these fellows for many months. <laughs> <laughs> and in that time, I have realized that it's not just our hatred of lewdness that binds us together, but it's our individual strengths that sets us apart. We have among us the power of a titan. We have the knowledge of the Ruidus born. We have ones who are dedicated to family. We have one who has command over the dead itself. And we have a guy who makes chairs. We also have been smiled upon by the prime deities themselves. Why, even last night, our smallest warrior was visited. I pull out seedling like the sword of fucking omens <laughs> over my head and let vines travel up my arm and up the blade and then press it down into the steps below me. He speaks true. The Wild Mother has blessed us here in this very city. The gods are watching. Take heed. As you say, the gods are watching. The golden gems that have since appeared upon the hilt <laughs> give off a golden light around you, casting your shadow long against the marble. And the whole room, you could hear the <gasps> kind of the awe around. Uh, the High Bearer Vord, the, the very representative of the Platinum Dragon here in this space, steps forward. You speak our tenets in our house. You yourself say you are a, uh, a devout follower. I do not believe we've crossed paths, but if you are to represent the holiest of those in this house, I would like to know which of our sainthoods you represent. Sainthoods? Which of the great saints of the Platinum Dragon do you walk the path of? Well, do I know what the fuck that means? <laughs> Make a religion. <laughs> uh, that's a 22. 22. <laughs> yeah, you know a number of saints. You studied here. Oh. Make one up. Oh. There have been so many saints. <laughs> so many devout in our hallowed history that have made a lasting impression in my heart. But the one that I that stands out to me was the fallen saint. Uh, the, this, uh, <laughs> saint Graham. Saint Graham, who, as we all know, um, fell from the path, strayed from his worship of the Platinum Dragon, and for many years was cast away until at the very end of his life, he realized his mistake and came back to the church, to the temple, and dedicated the rest of his days to helping those who needed, who needed just a little bit of guidance to the righteous path, those who had fallen like he had 
into the depths of despair and darkness. Mm. I feel like there are many on Ruidus and among us here on Exandria who have chosen the wrong path, but perhaps we can guide them back to the path of the righteous. The high bearer is <laughs> nodding, and as <laughs> and as you're speaking, <laughs> <laughs> With your bow, right? In your head, change your face. Change your face. <laughs> yes. As you're speaking, the high bearer is stepping like like down the stairs from their perch, their their seat, their throne, and is kind of listening and looking at you mm-hmm. and kind of walking and inspecting you as you're saying this. Uh, the and you've never met the high bearer, but you are well aware who they are. They they are the pinnacle of the Platinum Dragon's entire worship. A long living paragon of his word and tenets. And as they walk around you, looking at you, they approach. Indeed. And you wish to represent our Lord in this great and holy mission. Do you See and find within your heart the strength to carry that joy and justice as your weapon, as your shield, as the very essence of his greatness to protect them and protect us as they place their hand on your symbol on your chest that you've painted oh, over. Yes. <laughs> Till my dying day, High Bear. Roll a deception check. Oh, 20. 20, 20, total. <laughs> 20. Their eyes narrow at you a bit. <gasps> they remove their hand and step silently back oh, to their throne. No. Yet there are dark magics put upon this, uh, a necromantic bent that is sent to correspond with the light of holiness. Would you please assure us, how can we expect and hope that you will stay on the path of the righteous as well? I promise? (laughs) (laughs) Pinky square. Death is still very much a part of life. And while some may balk at the necromantic arts, they are still a part of the greater magics blessed to us by the gods of Exandria, by the Archheart, and furthermore, stewarded from the Matron of Ravens. When fighting such darkness, we have found it is often beneficial to have just a little bit of darkness on your side. Make a persuasion check. (laughs) Same Sam Regal. (laughs) (laughs) Natural 20! (laughs) Mother, mother, (laughs) (laughs) As you say this, Three figures stand from the side that were kind of obscured from your vision in the shadows of the sunlight that's been cast through the far form and what bit of like golden light sits in this chamber and the clusters of people. There was one element that almost seemed like your eyes didn't focus on. And as these three figures stand, you see these black, shrouded, veiled, robed figures. As they all stand in response to your statement, the room turns its attention. One of them steps forward. The Coven of the Veil hears her words. And we know this to be true. For what does light do but cast a shadow? They are in tandem, or should be. And it would be foolish to think one should exist without the other. It's about the balance. And there is much light in this group. We are comforted that a shadow walks among them and in step. That's fucking As fire. Psychically, you hear, I am so sorry. 
No, 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 Ashton, do not fuck us, do not fuck us. I'll step forward too. Okay. Let's go, Susan. That's true, that's true. Yeah. Let's go. They would be talking about me. And honestly, I think this is a very, very bad time to decide who ancient enemies are right now. Everyone is threatened. Yes, and I'm sorry that I am not serving any God present here right now. And the fact that that is even a problem, that is even a question right now, I find a little offensive. We are all here. I serve the weak. I serve the forgotten. I serve the dirt beneath our feet. And if you tell me that that's not enough for you, fine, I will fight on my own. Because honestly, the alternative sounds really fucking awful. Psychically, I fuck, fuck. <laughs> That was really good. <laughs> Make a persuasion check, a persuasion check for me, um, but I will let you use your strength modifier. I oh, say so because you stepped up with him. Is there a way you would like to aid this in Please? this conversation, knowing how challenged Ashton can be <laughs> in public speaking uh -huh. arrangements? I just pull my tits out. <laughs> 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 well, I'll buy them. Yeah. Just panic. <laughs> I believe them. Just one of them and lean right. One of them and lean right. They'll miss the whole thing. It'll be great. <laughs> we're at death's door all the time. Just Quick, spin the ball. Just leave it. Yeah, yeah. Just leave it. Yeah. All are looking up. Um, I'll just say, um, uh, I too have a, a, a shard of a titan, and I. I, I don't worship any one god, but I, I I do believe that they all deserve to live. Um, even the bad ones. <laughs> um, just putting that out there. <laughs> That's only my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, we're we're. We're pretty great, and we've already been to the moon, so <clears throat> I think you should pick us. <laughs> and the chair maker. <laughs> 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 and this uh, well-dressed lad. What do you offer this strange, motley crew? That's you, well-dressed guy. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking right at you. Oh, I just took chair maker and sort of blanked out. I just figured beauty before age, but I can take it. Sorry, what was your question? I, don't know. <laughs> I just, when I get around a lot of people, I sort of start to. <laughs> My core character trait. Would you repeat the question? God damn it. What do you have to offer to this venture? Oh. Well, you've made us all be honest. Uh, I'm not sure what I have to offer, but I know what my group has to offer. Um, I see it all around us. <laughs> we are you, <laughs> scaled down. We all saw you talking the other day, and I'm no expert, but it, it seems to me that you couldn't decide what the right course of action was, and just last evening, neither could we. I don't think that means that you and we will not make the right choice. Um, all of us come from different places, different backgrounds, and that's what gives us our strength. We may not be nobles or great religious powers, but we are simply people, capable people set to task, and the task we've been set to will require one moment of clarity and morality. And though none of us might be capable of doing it ourselves, as I do not know that I am, I know that we are. If you have trust in this chamber, perhaps you could have trust in us. The Flame Speaker Sokono says, a masterful deflection. 
<clears throat> but what is in your heart? What fire burns in your chest? What do you bring? While Dorian was distracted for the last 10 minutes or so, uh, there's been a tune in his head that he's been silently humming under his breath. Mm -hmm. It's something he does when he's nervous. And he's never been able to place the tune, and the notes have never come together in the right way, except for right before this was asked. And he hears something in the distance from outside of the chamber in that 10 minutes, and he accidentally uh, casted a spell through this song, uh, the spell of find greater steed. Mm -hmm. And as it materializes through the walls of the chamber uh, is a great equine dragon, the size of a draw horse. And when he sees it, he remembers the stories his mother used to tell him about this legendary mount from their family. And he remembers finally the song that she used to sing to him that haunted his dreams at the beginning of this journey. And as he does, uh, Coriolis, the great equine dragon, flies down and sits at his side, and sort of nestles its head into his chest. And he's as surprised as anyone. We may not look like much, but we have power. And we are capable. And so am I. And my heart desires to make a difference. Pet the steed on its head, slap it on its tail, Whew. and it leaves the chamber. Or I'm totally blue screens. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Oh! Yeah. 29. Uh, Sir Konos, who was looking at you intently, at first it felt like through you, but instead was just pushing you. Relents and smiles and sits back into the crowd. Does the chairman have a dragon too? The chair maker, not chairman. <laughs> Master craftsman, if you would, and C-Pop Industries would like to thank the Dawn Marshals of Vasselheim for their hospitality. Surely those of Wildmount know my creations, but Silra could benefit from an upgrade. <clears throat> <laughs> you ask what I bring. Faux Hondo. <laughs> I am not a holy person. I don't share many of your beliefs but I have walked Exandria for centuries. I remember Zan Taldore. I remember Everon the Rhyme Lord. I have seen the horrors that befall this land and how people are strong enough to rise up and rebuild. But what lewdness is entertaining is unleashing a horror that predates any of that, any of us and there's no telling where it could stop. The Pantheon, perhaps, but it could absolutely wipe the slate clean, and I will not let that stand as long as I draw a tiny, sexy breath. <laughs> so you ask what I give? Craftsmanship of which you can hardly imagine, but a wisdom that I think would rival any in this room and an unrelenting courage. I fear no man or creature. And I turn into a wolf. Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> you can do that? I could do it, but it just feels like a gross display of power, and it's not as cool as those two. I mean, fuck. <laughs> Lend bells hells your trust and faith. Lady Fern Calloway, Fae Sion of the Ancient Flame, Laudna, Veil Mistress of the Shadow Tree, oh, shit. Ashton the Reforged, Hammer of Paradox, <laughs> Chetney Pakapi, High Hunter and Lupine Paragon, 
What? Dorian Storm, Master Muse and Son of the Wind. <laughs> Imogen Timult, Exultant Hope of the Red Storm. <laughs> Orum of the Arashari, Savior Blade of the Tempest, she says with a smile. And Breus Doomseed, Nascent Might of the Platinum's Call. Okay, okay. That's good. The High Bearer stands from their throne perch. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> 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 Sorry, folks, a little, little off camera. This <laughs> <laughs> overheard. Uh, a, a young. I say young compared to you, gnome with like a tan skin and a blonde pompadour, wearing the raiments of the platinum dragon, kind of steps aside and goes, uh, Chetney? Chetney Pockaby? Yes? I've been waiting for this moment for so long. As we turn to you, looking through this crowd. What? Bronte. Hello, Father. And I'll turn to meet what I assume is. And there stands before you Zeru Wyvernland, his salt and pepper long hair pulled back, his beautiful, princely adornments, his, uh, his clothing almost a regal echo to your battle vestments. His stern, if somewhat sad and surprised expression meets yours. Bronte, you, you, you look well, son. Oh, uh, thank you. As to you, I... I suspected you might be here. I had no expectations of running into you here, <laughs> uh, let alone stepping up to such a monumental task. Oh, yes, well, it seems as if I've left home to shirk my responsibilities, and much greater ones have found their way to me. Yeah, certainly shirked a name, Dorian Storm. <laughs> well, I'm not so certain that when you took when you took your uh, sabbatical as a youth, you kept your name, your proper name, in the world. I don't begrudge you discovering yourself. It is your nature. <laughs> Thank you. Um, word of Cyrus's passing has reached us. Uh, we've not yet found the Time to properly mourn. I wanted to ensure that you were aware. I've been wondering if I should send word. Is Mother here? No, just just I. She's she's back with the squall, handling things while I represent here. On an invitation from the Ashari. We have, as you know, quite uh, historical. Yes. Tethers with uh, Zephyr. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> it's kind of awkward, isn't it? <laughs> he kind of just looks at you for a second, like just that that fatherly gaze into his son's eyes, where he's sizing up at what stage of development he's been. A uh, gaze you're familiar. You see just the peak of tears gather at the side of his eyes as he comes forward and takes you into a hug. Um, I think at first I uh, lock up, like as I tend to do with really a physical affection of any kind. But um, yeah, even though I feel strong, I start to, um, the embrace of a parent will always 
revert you back to your youth and, you know, even though we almost see eye to eye, I just collapse into him like a little boy and start to cry. As he's holding you, and kind of his hands kind of on, on your shoulder, he says in your ear, he says, you've, you've been lost to the world's rumors. For ages, son, we've been trying to find you for some time, especially given the events of late. Uh, we've missed you so much. I miss you too. <clears throat> are things managed at home? They are, best as they can be in the, in the ways of this current time. People are worried, yeah. scared. As they should be. <clears throat> Pronte, this is a monumental undertaking, a risk beyond words. There is no shame in returning home to us, leaving this to those capable no. No. and willing. The Silken Squall could use a returning son, our heir to the Squall's golden no. seat. No. I will not abandon this task. I love you. I love our home. But I can do this. Do you believe that I can do this with the help of my friends? That I can help them? Do you believe in me, Father? Do you believe in me? That's all I've ever wondered. Do you believe in me, Father? <clears throat> Is it so hard? Why do you pause? Why do you pause? The people that spoke out with me today did not pause. And I honor you. But I also question you. It was always him growing up. And he is gone. And I am sorry, and it was not my fault, it was his choice. But I have a chance to matter, to help others. And all I need is to hear it just once. I know you love me, you have always loved me, but you have never trusted me one time without hesitation, your only chance. Do you think? I can do this. It's not a question of whether or not I think you can do this. I hesitate not because of any lack of faith. Yes, I and your mother are gifted, burdened, living with the responsibilities of guiding our people. But underneath that all, we are a father and a mother, and we don't want to lose another son. So do I hesitate? Yes. But only because I'm scared. Because I believe in you. Because I can't nor will stop you. And because I know I have to believe that you can do what needs to be done. I just want you to promise that you'll return. I promise. I will come home. Good. And I reach out to uh, just shake his hand. Nothing ceremonial. Just a father shaking his son's hand. He shakes it and clasps it with his other. If you must make this journey, remain ever vigilant. Step no further than safety will allow. Heroism is a game for those with outstanding legacy. Lean on those you can trust. I understand. I better return to my group. We have much planning. Of course, of course. <clears throat> it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Wait. Here. And he unbuckles the ceremonial <clears throat> blade at his side. Papa. 
Take this. It is the symbol of our family. And has sworn to protect our people for many generations. It will continue to protect us. And many more in your hands. And he holds out to you what you know to be Gamble Cleft, the Vortex Blade. Oh, oh let's go, oh, Gamble Cleft! Yeah, okay. okay. This is the symbol of leadership within the Silken Squall community and has bound within it an ancient wind spirit that gave itself to eternal protection <laughs> over the people that you uh -oh. one day will inherit. I've been waiting so long for that. Seapop Industries, Chetney, Pockapi. That's right. I, I don't know how to, and I've, I've run this through my head so many times. Uh, I, it, I don't think I was ever have the chance. I am such an admirer of your work. I have been following it for decades now. All of my furniture pieces I've collected over the years, uh, distant collectors and, and, and various uh, auction houses. I have been piecing together the interior of my abode based on pretty much only things that you've made. I've gathered toys and gifted them to children throughout the entire neighborhood here. You are a master. I just reach out and hug him. <laughs> <laughs> You're st are you still alive? <laughs> no. Okay, you okay. did do it, okay. Right. Damn. I know it's hard to keep your composure. <laughs> I have interactions like this all the time. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Waylon, Scalebearer Waylon Amaretta. Uh, I, I, I've been one of the one of the Scalebearer aides here for some time. Uh, I, I just never thought I'd see someone like you walk into our humble walls. Well, you never know what can happen in Vasselheim. I always say, legends in these halls, myself <sighs> included. <laughs> well. Uh, I don't know how long you're staying in town, given you know all that's going on. But if you ever have some time, I'd love to show you what I've done with the place, and it's practically a museum in your honor. Uh, we are very, very busy. Obviously, lots of meetings, lots of secrets. Of course, of things. course. No, I, I, I expected so. It was <laughs> foolish of me to ever even suggest. I'd have to such check, you thing. know, and make sure that you're, you know, have the proper security clearances. But if you insist, I, I, I <laughs> suppose I could grant a single wish and, you know, peruse my old collections. I suppose. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I could break away for a moment, right? So oh, you're a big fan I don't of think we can risk it. Sure. You're a big fan. What was your oh. name? This uh. is Wayland the Wise. Wayland the Wise. Hi, Wayland. Wow. Hi. Pleasure taste. to meet you all. Uh, wow. I don't think you understand the scope of the majesty that you've been walking alongside this entire time. But there are dozens of us, Exandria wide, who. Uh, we send each other letters. We give updates. Uh, we. <laughs> what do you mean? There, there are more. There are more of you. We're the sea poppers. We have a whole band that we've been developing. <laughs> All of this. I've been working on a zine for the past few years. Wait, is um, the zone of truth still up? Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> the sea poppers. <laughs> we can change it if you don't like it. I mean, you know, with your input, we could really kind of. Bolster the I think community. Can I tell them that we met? Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you know what? Actually, I know a painter. Can I get a painty? <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. I'm overreaching. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, You're busy. You have a lot of time. No, no, no. I don't uh, know how long we have. A painty um, would be fine. Sorry, him. Uh, 
Uh, you know what? It, it, because we're so busy, it would be better if you worked with my assistant to schedule these things. Uh, Imogen! Imogen. <laughs> oh, there you are. This is Wayland. Wayland is a devotee. Hi, Wayland. Wayland. Absolute pleasure to meet you. You as well. I know we get lots of inbounds from the sea poppers, <laughs> but if you could move this one to the top of the pile. I thought we weren't allowed to lie right now, Chet. In your head. You <laughs> 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 What's funny is at this point you've left and he's just crossed the threshold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right. I'll just send you a little message when we're gonna head over. All right. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, you in, in, Imogen. I was in the same room as everyone else. You know, I'm ex exalted. Oh, that was you. What is my fucking title? <laughs> I'm a hope of the red storm. Of course, I am so sorry. Wow, I just. No, but yeah, we'll focused. let you know. I know he's I, great. We'll let you know. I'll it, talk to her. It's okay. Oh, anyway, I, I got. Oh, yes. Hi, Bear. Uh, pleasure. Well, I failed in my post many years ago, and and I pull out uh, an old. Rusty platinum dragon uh, symbol um, around a chain. Mm -hmm. And I show it to the high bearer and say, He broke this and sent me packing. Said I was not worthy of wearing this. But I've kept it and I've hoped in all this time that I could somehow earn the right to glue these pieces back together and earn the trust of the Platinum Sanctuary once more. I'm sorry that I misled you. High Bear's nostrils flare with a piercing gaze as a voice to the right goes, there are few things as wonderful in this world as a chance at redemption. Trust me, I would know. As Pike Trickfoot stands there holding forth the symbol of the Everlight. <laughs> the High Bear glances down with the symbol up towards Vord. Pike smiles. Historically, some of the most Faithful, saints, pious, loving leaders of this temple once fell from their perch, tumbled from their grace, and without a chance would they have ever had the opportunity to become the greatness that you still carry, bearer. Make a persuasion check with advantage with Pike's health. Thank you, Pike. 32. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> At a DC 30. <laughs> it's the fucking high bearer of the Platinum yeah. Sanctuary! What do you think? <laughs> 32. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps you are right, Miss Trickfoot. Too much is at stake here. You see the eyes glance down at the symbol that you've painted and back up at you, and you can acknowledge in their expression that there is or are facets of your persona seen through. They're letting you know with their eyes that in some small way they might acknowledge some truth you don't want them to, but then they smile. But paths to redemption can be quite powerful symbols of faith for those that need a way to the light. 
Well, Breus Doomseed, if you are to represent our great dragon, you need armor that truly bears their symbol. As they put their hand out and wipe the paint <gasps> from the chest plate. Oh, 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 oh. As they turn around, you can see there are two scale bearer aides that are approaching with a massive platinum chest. <laughs> As the high bearer raises their hand and the chest is lifted open, you can see that like it's there's it's a heavy weight on this. And as they open it up and inside, the light catches a beautiful, intricate set of silvered platinum plate mail. This is truth bearer. Oh shit. The oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you're getting called out. Oh, the fabled plate of Uthor Vendrock. Oh, the silvered star, one of the kindest and most noble warriors of the platinum dragon. <laughs> you should well be acquainted with their history. Am I? You roll a history check. Or risk your religion, your call. 23. You very much know who this is. Yeah. They live between, it's estimated like they're like 500 to 575 uh, PD. They were like a cherished guardian of the downtrodden. They were a hero to those without light. Uh, they carved a legacy in like the annals of Alexandrian history through their deeds and charity and heroism. Uh, when their soul finally passed into the Platinum Dragon's embrace, this armor was kept as a symbol of hope and protection within the sanctuary. May it protect you on your path to redemption. And they present the armor to you. The two, as the scale bearers begin to take it out and essentially help remove your armor, and place it upon you in a sudden ceremony here on the steps as the High Bearer just watches you the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's a fine fit. Do us proud, Doomseed. I will make it fit <clears throat> even better in my deeds. And they walk away. Keyleth is fine. Good luck. You too. She kind of puts her hand up and kind of brushes the side of your cheek for a second. And as she pulls her hand back, this kind of flower grows off and around the ear and up through the hair. This beautiful, bright lavender flower. And just a little shock of yellow in the stamen. She smiles and walks down the stairs. She's pretty amazing. Been telling you. <laughs> She's seen some shit. You all watch her as she runs and leaps off the stairs hundreds of feet in the air over Vasselheim before <laughs> turning into a hawk. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> Taking off and sitting. <laughs> She's at it again! <laughs> No, not again. <laughs> 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 Why did she do that? She's just broken down. <laughs> I ran out of ideas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> really? I misunderstood my environment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's a little thing. <laughs> Oh my god. That was a blow. That's so funny. Uh, Respect the fuck out of that. Scattering red mess. Jenny Pockapi, hi, Hunter and Lupine Paragon. Paragon? Paragon. <laughs> Perhaps one day the words will find your mouth. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Yes. Jenny Pockapi. Your helm is. So impressive. Um, may I just say it is quite an honor to be in the same space as the ruler of the dynasty. I have had a very rare occasion to, to meet fellows from, from your domain. Um, but I wanted to ask, in case it isn't expressed later, your powers, your magics from your realm are extremely rare and, and baffling. Um, if there is anything that you might 
uh, consider granting us or, 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 or leaving with us as we consider uh, our part of this approach. I would be most grateful. Your staff, for instance, would be a, a, an incredible <laughs> boon, but I, I, I realize you might need that. So, you know, I'm just throwing my ask out no. there. Oh. What you ask is not impossible. The tasks that you walk towards are dangerous beyond word or comparison. It would be an honor to bestow upon you this singular artifact of the Kryn dynasty. As she takes it and kneels before you and places it. Wait, no. Thank you, my lady. She pulls it back. Of course not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Her guard, her guard chuckle under their helmets. She goes, well done. <laughs> I respect the brazen <laughs> request. That was quite bold of you, youngin. Oh. Mm. So was that was oh. years old. Hmm. I appreciate this for both the playful arrogance and the laugh that I desperately needed this day. And she, like, she's looking at you. You expect it to be, given the context of this, like condemnation, <laughs> but no, there there is the kind of an amusement and a nod to it. Are you gonna fuck the bright queen? <laughs> says it happened already. Um, <laughs> she does. Respect. Yes. <laughs> Respect. I uh, just wanted to float it and thank you again for speaking on our behalf. I realize what a rarity it is for you to be sharing the room with some of these um, individuals, and so again, I, I thank you. She kind of puts a hand up to one of her guard and leans into you, sets her staff off to the other and kind of kneels to your eye level. I'm single. She goes, you might yet be a bright spot in our future in history, should you be willing and open. You travel with one who is themselves a rift between many contradictions. The one you call Ashton. We are very interested in who or what they are and what they're capable of. If you could return to us when this is done with as much information of their nature, perhaps even a means of bringing them into our control. There are a great many rewards that could await such an ambitious chair, man. Interesting proposal. I will give it great care and consideration. Indeed. Just think on it. Chetney Bokkabee. Bright queen. <laughs> You're an asshole. I know. You look over and you see uh, the fantastic uh, scale bearer, um, <laughs> the compatriot who's Wayland. like waving, Wayland. wailing. It's like, uh, hi. Hey, uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I just want to make sure I didn't miss a message or anything um, um, when he's available. I, no. I'm completely done with my. Uh, you didn't, but are you done? I, I'm finished, and just, I guess, whenever. I'm talking, Whenever you're ready, talk to I, me. Like, I can look like I'm real busy. Oh yeah. Mm. You know, it just feels like I wait, there's no, like I can't. I just can't. Just, can't. You know, I can't. so if you have any amount I can't. of time, I'm sorry, I'm too would, busy. Your contribution would be so right, valuable. Well, oh yes, yes, Imogen, assistant. Wayland's free. If you want to go ogle at your old work. <sighs> Is my calendar clear? Is your calendar what? My. my 
I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine. If you would be so kind, Waylon, lead the way. The honor is absolutely mine. Yeah, no, come along, everybody. Uh, I made no promises, it's not a whole lot, but at the very least, maybe it'll, you know, set you on the rest of your day. <laughs> is that a white stone? That doesn't even mean. Yes! Yes! <laughs> he is a it's mess. Working. Oh man, this oh, is God, this a little embarrassing. I'm actually a very influential uh, and important figure here in the sanctuary. I just, Everyone's got I a mean, hobby. come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I have a couple. I'm not the collector that I think you're sounding like, but I have a few. I really? appreciate, yeah. Would you sell them? I'd have to talk to my mom back home. <laughs> uh, okay, they're well, not just mint. They're well loved. That, okay, then there's some negotiable uh, <laughs> transitions there. Um, but that, no, that's, that's fine. I'm gonna show my little wolf on my belt. Very <laughs> he made this for me. I can tell immediately. Whoa! Isn't it amazing? You want to touch it? Oh, look at the chisel marks in this one. This one, yeah. it's striated against oh, yeah. the grain of the wood. Look, look at how he does horse. that. It's really something. He made me this horse. I mean, you do that. Oh, anyway, uh, you see him, he's like struggling between three different selves and is like both embarrassed but excited but also trying to be important. Like, <laughs> he's about to melt down. My eyes are just kind of watering up the whole time. <laughs> As you, are we all pulling out? Pulling out our. Oh, this one Look, tells you to you, leave so that I don't have it, to. It, it gallops. Well, it made me the horse. The legs catch all these a little bit on. <laughs> the, this is like a the, senator who's like a low key the, mega trekkie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I, all yeah. Sizes. Uh, I I assume all these are are deeply beloved keepsakes, but if any of you would be interested. He made yeah, me this something. doll. Her name's Sashimi. She has knives for hands. I have not seen a macabre twist of yours. This is is this like a new <laughs> period of your artistic expression? You put it words to it. Yes, that's absolutely what it is. Sometimes oh I make her come alive and she can stab you. That make his this is Seventh Frank artistic here. era. You're in a new. What? Oh my goodness! He <laughs> collects himself. I am losing. <laughs> he should, made me a beautiful we toy boat. Power down and get. Yeah. Yeah. I gave yes, it. Where is it? I gave it to a street urchin. <laughs> <laughs> Which urchin? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, uh, I, a uh, um. um a modest abode for a scale bearer, but you know, a, a nice home that that is built towards the base of the heaven stair. Um, you know, fine silver and stone statues. That can's claw. Uh, what have you been doing over there? Wow. <laughs> 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 I oh! oh! What did you do? Did you do? Yes! It was just the wind. Sorry. <laughs> I was listening to lore. Okay. <laughs> Glad somebody was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> slap my dick in the window over here. Um, Dirty ass boys, actually. I know. <laughs> Welcome to the Chateau de Cipop. <laughs> and it's the door opens so up so and you enter this chamber. Like, for you aside, you see. Um, from an out, from an, an exterior that is like stone, uh, you know, painted wood reinforced, but it is like a, a, it very much befits the rest of the surrounding architecture of the civil town's reach. It is modest, but also has elements of its, uh, you know, roof and and gilded edges and beautiful bits of ivy that are covered towards the sides that kind of you know curl down the out, outer rim of the building. Uh, he opens the door, and the interior is wall to wall shades of worked and stained wood. Um, the facets of the interior that aren't made signature, like decorations, have been retrofitted to match the tone and themes. Uh, it feels like the most polished cabin interior ever. Um, with, with, with cabinets after cabinets after cabinets that are filled with all manner of knickknacks and sculptures and toys and all, all of these incredible, there, there are, this place, there are 17 chairs you can see that are, have no place to be where they are, but they're in there like kind of clustered in corners lining each other, like all the walls are just lined with chairs. Um, tables. Uh, there are pitchers. There are uh, like like cups, and and you can see it is it is kind of a veritable uh, tiny museum. And and as you, you begin to look at these wonderful things in play, and you're like, 
oh, there's more beyond this room, and you realize like this house is built into the side of the thing. There's a room behind it that opens up into a full display chamber oh with labels. You can see like like, like wh where they were acquired, what year. Um, you can you can see there are uh, it, there are extensive uh, extensive work has gone into cleaning. Caring and, and 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 setting as much information that existed about each of these pieces. They are labeled with estimations of their creation, with a year range of where it's believed they may have been crafted, um, <laughs> along with like a few little letters next to it. You are uncertain what that sort of coding means in his cataloging process. What's this coding mean? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that that see that. that that's how I can make sure that I ascertain at what point it was both uh, purchased by me and uh, represents the uh, the general uh, uh, like quarter century in which the uh, sea poppers have uh, relegated the possibility of his creation by you know trying to cross reference it with the different periods of artistic inspiration. W when did you become a sea popper, Waylon? Oh, <laughs> you know. Like all of us, sea poppers, we like <laughs> before we before we truly came to realize who and what we were and and, and found our community. Uh, there's that. There's the beginning, or where we we find our first piece. I I was quite young, um, just maybe a, a, a custodial uh, acolyte here in the uh, the the temple, and um, there was this. Traveling merchant who was bringing uh, knickknacks and keepsakes from afar, uh, come across the sea, and amongst their collection, nothing really of interest, except for one. And you see his eyes kind of go wide and have a, a thousand yard stare as he darts past and around to this massive iron safe, and just goes, <laughs> pulls another key, and another key, and like. Turns them both at the same time. <laughs> oh my God. This is the room you're gonna. It die. opens. <laughs> I whisper. I put in your head. I'm okay with that. And he pulls out this tiny wooden egg. What's special about this egg? Oh boy, Chetney. That's from my Oblivion edition. <laughs> if you twist it a certain way, it reveals. That which is most precious. precious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Go ahead. Show them. And he presses the sides of it and the tops, and then kind of twists them in a way where you watch this like solid egg, the wood kind of lattices outward huh? and kind of turns. And as it does, you can see there's a small platform hidden inside. And on it is this tiny little pearl, the shined pearl. Shit. That's pretty cool, man. So it's a safe within a safe. Woo! That's really oh. amazing. They're Turns very rare. Yeah. How much How would something like that for? Mm -hmm. Go. Well, by our account, there's only four of these that exist in Exandria. Uh, three that remain undamaged. I'm sorry. Uh, this one is pristine. Um, is that how many you made? Did you make any more? There is another. <laughs> <laughs> really? A fifth? I carry it. He puts his back in his face. And he means he's running down. Okay. Fifth, fifth. That's also a safe within a safe. Waylon, oh do you do you live here, or this is strictly just a museum for CPOP? Yes. Oh, I. Okay. This is my home. Do you charge it's, admission? Not for you, by any means. Oh, but for others? Of course, look at some of these pieces. I mean, this chair is from my tallow collection, my take a load off collection. It's absolutely <laughs> pristine. You've cared for it beyond 
Uh, comprehension. He's writing everything you're saying down. And he's like, Tallow Collection, is that the third age? It is. The third inspiration? Oh Tallow Collection. We've had, it's all been interpreted from our side, and we have kind of a little code language about which each era represents, but like, if I could just pick your brain. Of, of course. Literally. No, I mean, just, just in the evening. I'm sure he has questions. Oh. I mean, after all, a, a master craftsman is nothing without an apprentice every once in a while. Oh he faints. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hands. Oh, oh, no! I'm so, I'm so... <laughs> He knocked a couple things off the shelf and I reached out and picked one up. I was like, you have one of, oh, this is from my sensual collection. I hope this isn't used. <laughs> it's just curved. <laughs> it's like, I thought that was an incense holder. Sure. What? <laughs> I had no idea that it's cool. I had no there are no idea rules. That this sort of thing was like actually a, I... oh God! <laughs> we cool, we cool. <laughs> Wait, do you remember the name of the merchant that, that you met? Oh, I don't. It's just... It just, it just, out of the rest of the, the riffraff and noise, this piece found me, and he only charged me five of gold, but I know it, well, it's worth so much more, and it is. Piece. How much is it worth? Well, I mean, we're still kind of calculating from a, a worldwide collector's degree based on you know continuous stages of auctioneering uh, and trade. Um, but th this today sits somewhere easily within the 80 to 150 gold range, depending oh. on uh, the interest. I say that because that's uh, the offers that I'm getting, but I will never sell it. Wow. And he puts it gently make... back in the Shit. safe and closes it. You have to make this fellow so a custom piece. Might be the greatest wood worker of all time. Do you have like meetups, like a a place? We've where only had a couple. It's a long distance for a lot of people, so um, we kind of have like regional meetups, like a pop conference, like a yeah, like a pop conference. conference. You write that down. Eight hundred gold, started my wildest dreams. Eight hundred gold, finally getting the recognition it deserved. <laughs> Oh, you don't even know what I paid for that table. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must great. know. Well, I mean, the the, 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 the mahogany that keeps all the, the there's the, as you know, the, there are five different trees inlaid throughout its start. It is a, a masterpiece uh, of, of craftsmanship. That, I. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't the only bidder, but I did win out uh, at a solid uh, 800 gold. <laughs> he wasn't the only bidder. With all these pieces, uh, they're amazing, but are there any fakes? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah let me look. You'd know, right, Chuck? Make a perception check. They're all my children. Uh, eight. Oh, eight. You got tears in your eyes. Yeah, I got tears in my eyes. This is 400 years. Come yep. back. Yep. No, and, and it's true. You, you have the most discerning eye for your craftsmanship on any other day, but in this moment, the emotion clouds you, and in a glance, all of this has to be. <laughs> all of it oh, has yeah, to be the well. genuine deal. It's like looking in a mirror. <laughs> I see myself at 22, 222, <laughs> 300 or more. This no, is three, beautiful. You just, oh, you just shaved off 21 years. Thank it's you, odd. Man. It was an odd jump. So, what was the inspo for the Oblivion collection? Cheers. Well, things on the outside are not always what they. Have. Here on the inside, and after all, beauty lies <laughs> in the eye of the beholder. But uh, surely you're not interested in hearing everything. Go on. No, this is. We want to. Uh, this feels like the most we've learned about you in the entire six months we've been together. I'm strangely into this. Keep going. No, well, some were commissioned pieces and. Um, others were just moments of inspiration, the little things that we come across that have beauty in them and how they can be transformed. I love that it found its way to you and that you care for it so deeply. That's all an artist ever really wants. Oh, 
I'm just happy to see that you're still making work. You were wasted under Ulkar. I was. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. But I, I, I took care of that. Trixlich is still another thing. Can I just say that you have made this a night to remember? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he just, it's not getting words out. I'm gonna need. In through the nose, out through the mouth. So. An evening. Well, I was going to say, what you do know. What do you mean, like to stay here? I'm going to have to, yes, this must be chronicled. Well, it's so rare that you find check. someone, what? There are some really important no, things No, I don't happen. think so. I can't go on. Well, we do have to sleep tonight, so you could just oh my. sleep, sleep here. here. Do you? Did you make beds? Did I make beds? Do you have beds? beds? <laughs> yes, did you well, make beds? Know. Do you know me at all? Well, Wayland, did I make beds? No. Would you like to see the guest quarters? Sure. Yeah. Can he shows you to an additional chamber off to the side that kind of connects to the museum, and you can see within this room there are nine beds jammed into a room that is too small to carry them. Everything here is like borderline hoarder, just organized well, um, and they're just kind of like pushed in this. But you can see he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm saving up for an expansion. I'm running out of room for." <gasps> you have the dwarf futon cut. Yeah. It is anatomically correct to the adult dwarf figure. It is perfect in every way. For dwarves! Anatomically correct, I'm so sorry. I need that explained to me. Anatomically correct bed? Of course. What am I looking at? What am I missing? If you were a dwarf and you were to lay your body upon it, it would envelop you in love and a caress that which you've never experienced before. Wow. That sounds incredible. I create because I am. <laughs> Money is fucking important, but it's not why I did it. <laughs> and I'll do it until I no longer draw breath. I'm working on new pieces right now. <gasps> you could call them my legendary beasteries of souls. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Uh, spell that for me, please. Uh, how do you spell that? Legendary peace de resonance. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. I. I don't. It's elemental. I don't know if this is the right time to bring it up, but like, me and some of the other sea poppers have been organizing one of these regional events. Um, if you're available, uh, maybe. You'll, and six, seven weeks from now, mm. would you be a guest at PopCon? <laughs> Someone's going to wow. have one of your pieces oh, glued you to their hand. Once something out of the before the end of the world. No, no, weeks from now. Weeks from now. <laughs> both... After the that is, world. that is, a, that is. To a be fair, outlook. we did schedule it before all of this happened. Okay. Like, and you don't get to kind of right before. Back. It was you very disconcerting. Yeah. Like, but you're going to keep to it. If we do save the world, we also yes. save this place. And we save popcorn. <laughs> Well, I've the never Find known motivation the like this. <laughs> Wayland, Popcorn will survive, <laughs> as will we! You're gonna roll a D100 in the next Not 20 minutes. Not only will I be there, <laughs> so will they! I, I believe. Why do we need me there? Just the fact you guess of honor, you know? Oh. No one will come to our signing tables. <laughs> I'll, I'll teach yours. you how to make stuff. You can figure it out. You've got I will make your beds. Uh, <laughs> I, I know a chef. We can make the finest of food. The food for a king. And you, you will be my guests of honor for the night. And for all the struggles you have ahead of you, I could not see the fate of Alexandria in better hands than those behind this great artist. I'm sure you have more of an imagination. <laughs> he will. Oh, no. He will carve our future. Yes. Yes, he will. I think he will. You know, you, you mentioned what we <laughs> 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 Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> yeah? 
I don't think that's ever happened in the history. I know. Of the show. I'm losing it. You mentioned wanting to get a painting, and we happen to have a very talented, a uh, bit uh, messy and chaotic mm. painter. I could paint you two together, but I, I would love a signed pop. <laughs> <laughs> Too weird. Yes. Oh no! Oh no! I need to leave. I'm sorry, Paul. Oh no! Because you've shown appreciation in my art, one hundred percent. And please, no, don't make don't. it out to me. <laughs> Just sign it. Okay. Just sign it. Sure. Because I don't know what my. Do you want me to doodle anything on it? I might put it on D and D Bay. Okay. <laughs> And we're gonna end it there for the night. <laughs> because that is the button if ever there was one. Oh my god. It kept circling. <laughs> we had to pull out, had to pull out, it was getting too deep. Oh god. Oh. I was getting a nosebleed. What is reality oh right now? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, wait, if we wait, stay wait. the night here, what if I die in my sleep? <laughs> I'm sure he already bought a coffee here. If there was ever a moment, (laughs) you'd be on the left. You'd become the centerpiece of the country. We will weaken Ernie's view all the way to the fucking to the moon. Platinum dragon on this side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were. Uh, you roll. You roll. Like that was oh, the wrong dice, so it didn't count. We got one more chance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh my God. 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 Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We love you very much. And is it Thursday? Yeah. Good night. <laughs>